All right, hello, we are back. We are painting a goblin. We're painting one of the strongest goblins in the world, Skarsnik. Okay, so his squig is, uh, we're going to call him done, but his teeth has not been, have not been done. Neither has his eye. Said I was going to do that in part one, but obviously didn't. Um, we're going to do his cloak. Right, that's what we're going to do. Now, a few things have happened. So it's been an hour or two. Or whatever it has been. And you'll see on the palette, if you've left your Chimera paints on your wet palette, little bubble forms and you'll think that, you know, it has now been hydrated. Right, if we pull on that, look, it's, it seems pretty wet. Now there's a few things that you need to know about this. One, the paint needs to be mixed, okay? So just pulling it out of that pile um, will result in like clumps of pigment, right? So the paint is not usable right now. It needs to be mixed. So you need to mix it up on the palette. Um, and you probably should still try to change it a little bit with Flo-Aid or a thin arm, but you might find that it is wet enough now. Regardless of that, you need to understand, so it's important just to remember that although you've left it and it looks like it's wet and it's now better hydrated, it's still not going to perform like you want. It, is, it, it hasn't really been hydrated in a way that's useful for you. Okay, that's something you need to remember. So you may need to just throw all this out. Okay, so understand that. So beginner tip. You may have to throw that out. You can't always just use this from the palette thinking that it's still good to go. I am uh, in a pretty dry room as well. What did we do in the last uh, video? All right, we're going to do it again. Start in shadow, build to a base coat, a mid tone, and then highlight from there. And we're going to use blue. Now, our shadow was the same, it was a purple, it was a blue and a red. So we're gonna build up to that blue by using that same mix and then adding more blue or reducing the level of red. Then, unlike what we did with the red, where we had to use a different color to highlight, we're gonna use white, okay? Because it, it produces a nice color. White and blue produce a nice color. You can also uh, add green if you want to get a, a different sort of effect. This I painted a long time ago, so it's be pretty rough. Um, so you can, you can add green as well. That's an option to you because that green has the yellow in it of a higher value. Okay, so there are your options. All right, so that little jump is uh, an intermission, those things happening in the background. Uh, while there was uh, noise happening in the background, I decided to paint the eyeball. Uh, and I just kind of changed the color of the teeth a little bit. Um, so, we're back on track and we're going to talk about le bleu, le bleu, le bleu, le bleu. So, what do you need to do? Well, you need to get that base coat back. So, as you can see, the paint is seemingly wet. That's good but it is not mixed. You need to mix this pretty well. Okay, otherwise you're gonna have those flakes in there. That's a bit of an issue. Now this is probably the same color. It is in fact a little bit darker. I'm gonna test that in the shadow. Oh, it's a nice color though. Wow, okay, so let's go. We're gonna paint this color. So what I'm doing is I, I, I started a new mix and so it's probably, and it, I'm saying that do this, it is a good idea to start again. So that means, so I've left that paint to dry and I now have a new kind of starting level. There's a little puddle here, there's way too much paint, I need to get rid of that, okay? So I'm putting in a new shadow as it were. And the reality is those quick first coats they probably weren't thick enough. Uh, not, they were definitely thick enough, um, despite you know being thin, but they didn't cover as well. 
and so having multiple codes is a good thing so it's not a problem to start again and also you'll find that see this this is essentially a third code um, its coverage is much 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 better so if you then come back after doing that kind of initial coat and it's not looking a flat smooth color then go back put another coat on okay so this is a reasonably different color okay it's more of a red purple but that's okay this is going to be well into the shadow so it doesn't particularly matter would you like me to zoom in folks at home mentally go back in time and answer that question do you want me to zoom in hmm. reading messages from the future they say yes but little do you know that this was lovely camera that I paid too much for sucks so we're starting in shadow paints reasonably wet here so I probably want to let this coat dry a little bit I can help this along because I see these puddles here get rid of some of that excess paint but this is very very dangerous what I'm doing and I probably wouldn't do this if there wasn't flow improver and the fact is there probably isn't flow improver so I should stop because when I go back and fiddle with these still drying layers so really I'm just trying to move the wet paint over is I have a very 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 real and dangerous um, dangerous dangerous for your painting um, thing that's going to happen and that is that I'm going to push dry layers around that aren't 100% dry and as a result it's going to push those paint layers and they're going to dry in clumps and you're going to get this unwanted texture so if that is bad you don't want that now down there is some white spaces that are going to haunt me so I could probably just take Gobbo off look at that look at that and paint it huh? you didn't, didn't think Gobbo could do that let me tell you something about Gobbo he is the man right? this little boy grew up to be a superstar okay I lost his teeth but he is a superstar, okay? Uh, as you can see by that, by, from part one, so I've not changed the skin at all, but then I clean, I, I did something to the eye and now it looks better. Also the paint dried, okay? The paint dried. Wow. There's a comparison with his old mate, okay? Well, maybe I should get a bunch of those models and have lots of little gobbers. That'd be adorable. It would be adorable. So, what do I do? I need to add blue right because I want to build up to blue now the risk here is just need some flow improver it's very dry the risk is you will go up too fast okay when I mean up too fast is you're going too quickly to uh, the blue now the layers that are here need to really just be the darkest shadow bits and this is the choice that you need to make is how much of this shadow do you want to be visible if you remember our discussion about uh, artistic choices this is it this is the artistic choice how much shadow are you going to be leaving on the model how much of the model will be in the mid-tone and how much of it will be a highlight okay if you want to be in that heavy metal style, then the mid-tones are big, the shadows are small. Um, and I actually love that style. And I uh, will be trying my best as time progresses to get better at that. I'm definitely not uh, there yet, I can tell you that much. But these, this initial layer is our darkest shadow. So if this was you know you primed it black then it'd be very apparent that it should be in the darkest darkest places where the sun don't shine is where you leave black and you would you possibly have heard you know don't use black when you're painting don't use white when you're painting 
And the reason why you don't use those colors, or they say you don't use those colors, and they, you know, the artist teachers are trying to get you to use different colors, is because those should really be reserved for your deepest shadows and your brightest, pointiest, sharpest uh, points. So the tip of a knife, that's your pure white, and where the sun don't shine is your pure black. Okay? And that should be hidden in, uh, underneath this person's pants. Okay, so you shouldn't have to see those, that the black. But all that paint black Templars, well, you need to use black then. <clears throat> But in moderation, it's the same as your uh, your blood angels, right? And this goblin, this uh, squig, sorry, it needs it's a red squig. But did we use pure red all over it? No, we didn't, right? So I add blue. So what's the next step? Because I want to build to my um, primary color, which is going to be blue, by the way. So if you want to use a different a mix as your mid tone, there is a you're going to have to mix all your paints first, right? And I don't do it this way, but it's a much better way is to have a transition. And you should have two transitions, so two puddles. So have the color that you want, make that so you have enough for two puddles. Okay, so if I, I want this blue, I have two puddles of that blue, and then I mix this down into shadow, and I mix this up into a highlight. So I have a light transition, and I have a shadow transition. So that will help a lot. And then when you start progressing to, um, you know, th actually thinking about where the sun is hitting, or sorry, the light is hitting in, on your model, then you will only put the uh, light transition where the light is directly hitting your model. And then your shadow transition um, is in your shadow. And that includes secondary reflections if it is a ref secondary reflection of your light source. Um, so that means the color all the way over there on your shadow, it's still your mid-tone, but um, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything brighter than what's in the light in your shadow, unless there's a secondary light source, like, you know, a flame, something like that. So I'm progressively adding this color in, right? And I'm trying to leave spots where there is shadow okay so underneath this sleeve i've now not painted that, that blue i've now decided that i'm leaving pretty big shadows here okay and i just progressively do it the good thing or the bad thing about painting is it's going to look better when it dries <clears throat> so trust the process paint less and less space move in to the uh, parts that are facing upwards And then leaving parts that are facing downwards um, as you progress from dark to light and try like just keep going just keep progressing up and up and up and up and up and as you get better and you can store or even if you just want to sit down and actually think about where the lights hitting your model like I said I'll have a whole video on that at some stage uh, but there will be videos out there already Although I've not really found some. You want to look for some uh, drawing videos. They have good videos on uh, that sort of stuff. Is you progressively get paint smaller, smaller spaces with brighter colors. Okay. Now I'm already getting pretty close to blue. And this is the thing that always happens with me. Is I kind of rush to that blue pretty quick. This is still looking pretty purple. So I'm basically covering this entire area because I want this to be in full light, right, as it were. So I want it to be brighter and I want this model to look blue. So when I say I have large shadows, I kind of like, I kind of like, let's be fair. Now, trick to getting high contrast. Higher contrast, 
higher for my standard, right? Maybe not for the, the standard of good people, is put your lightest bits next to your darkest bits. So I've started putting, so this robe has two pieces, right? You can see it even on this blurry camera. So I know that I'm gonna to build towards a highlight at the edge. So I'm gonna have a dark space underneath that. So there's gonna be light next to dark. So the contrast will be really high there. So building up. I've left some dry pigments there. So that was my own fault because I was um, moving paint around that wasn't willing to move around like that. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the other model is I'm gonna have this little dark patch there. It doesn't make sense, but I want this part to stand out. So I'm gonna have that as dark, okay? So it's, it's not, doesn't make uh, you know sense in terms of light placement, but yeah, it doesn't really. But it, it makes um, aesthetic sense. It's going to look nice, I think. Possibly. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, you might look at it and you're like, oh man, that, that looks trash. And you're probably be right, okay? Because you're, you're allowed to have your opinion on whether something looks good or not. Again, you know, having the skin not done really doesn't make this look good. Um, so you can see these puddles right let's be fair i do want them to dry okay because i want to start moving up towards a oh my camera's still on hey guys how you doing i want to start moving up towards the highlight so this is another thing that i don't know how to fix is these little dried chips here and if that gets into your paint creates problems so that sucks, right? I always let it get into the paint because I'm a loser. I'm a loser. Okay, some guy puts um, uh, these things on top of that. Right, apparently they fit. I thought it was a good idea. I probably won't do it one day, but maybe, 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 maybe. So let it dry a little bit. And I'm gonna wanna put that pure blue, because I want that as my base. So that's come straight out of the little tub. So I need to thin it. I have some flowing previous sitting there. Use water, remember? That's pretty thin, right? So if you get that really translucent um, look on your nails, so you can see through the paint and through to your nail. That is more of a glaze consistency, okay? When you're testing, I'd say you're testing transparency on your thumb and then you're trans testing the how sharp you can paint a line on your thumb, right? Um, but also like, I, I think the, the thumb is good for kind of testing your brush strokes. Transparency is the same, I guess. You could you do it on your thumb as well. But the good thing about it is your nail is it will leave a little puddle. So if you see the puddle, then you know you probably need to wick off paint off your brush. So that's what this is that I'm doing here. So I want it a little bit thicker. So I'm adding more paint, right? A little bit more paint because, oh God, such a nice color in it. Do you know? Back in ancient times, a blue like this did not exist. Do you know that? Now, there is a texture that you cannot see because my camera is so lovely. All right, so feel free to donate $7,400 million and I'll buy a can of soft drink and a camera. Um, there is this texture because I've not really been letting this dry and this paint um, if you really want to be wet blending it, then you need to properly put in that flow improver. You need to put in paint retarder. You need to like fully put in your additives um, and then move it completely while it's wet. But because, and you need to really, really shake this paint. I am lazy, so I may not do that. And as a result, right, 
um, you get this kind of bad texture on there that looks kind of trash. Now, how do you hide that? Well, have lots of different colors that are blending in. And then because you have all those different values of pigment, the confusion is merged together by your eyes because your eyes are like, wow, that's, uh, there's too many little things there. Let's just put it all together as one thing. And then it looks like a smooth blend, right? So you need to kind of trick, trick the eye with that. And that's, that's really what painting is, is your eyes seeing all those different colored pigments on the model. And it decides, hey, we're going to just put these all together into one color. Um, and then spreading those out, right? So that's that's where those those painters that paint everything by glazes have those such beautiful models. is because the, the, the all those different pigments and colors are spread out so well and uh, intertwined together so masterfully that they're amazing. I personally just don't have the patience. Um... But I definitely want to get to that stage where I can do that. Patience is not my virtue, right? Which doesn't really make sense, right? So every, like I, I, if I just, instead of painting these 200 models that I've got here or more, which you've seen, saw in the background of my cat in the previous video, um, and I just kind of focused on one, then I would possibly get a better result but the reality is um, you need to build your skill. So that means painting more models. But at the same time, you need to build your skill, which means spending more time on single models. So you need to do that. The R with blue. Looks purple, doesn't it? But it's blue and now what we do is I have my blue and this is my solid blue that I was just trying to put in uh, I could put another layer there if I wanted all right but to be honest who cares let's go up let's build these highlights so I wasn't really thinking about these highlights which is a bit of a problem we want to put this where the light would be hitting it Surfaces that are closer to you, um, surfaces that are pointing upwards, okay? They may be things that hit more light. Um, and at the same time, surfaces that you want to just make sure people can see, right? That's something that needs to happen, is you need to ensure that there is some readability in your model. So, god damn, blue is such a nice color in it. I'm going to, on this bottom one, not go all the way up to that ridge because remember I said that I want dark next to light. So I'm trying to get some readability. And you'll find that with the blue, at least in this case, that blue that's already on the model here is essentially the shadow. Okay, the blue that I'm now putting on is what's going to be the midtone. So that's something that uh, practice with your models will help with, so you actually know what color you're going to get. So as an example, I have one that I will show you in a second of how that how, you need to experiment, right? Or Follow recipes online, but the thing is people don't seem to, oh, that's probably not a good choice down there, but for readability, that, that's an okay choice. It doesn't seem to be a lot for Chimera um, that I've seen out there, especially not for beginners. Yeah, this paint's not thinned enough at all. Uh, and so that's why I'm doing this, taking a bullet, taking a bullet, this would be the same as just, you know, for any limited color palette. Oh, I've gone way too wet. Don't worry. It's a bubble, yes. It's a problem, but who cares? Just persist. 
persistent builds. So that's the advantage with Chimera and this kind of thing is you make those errors with um, thickness of the or translucency of the paint it might be too thin for your purpose and like my purpose is paint faster not so much paint great like i want to paint okay but i don't want to be uh, painting in glazes but if you, if you legitimately want to get better you need to paint with thinner paints and put more layers it's that it's kind of that simple all right i'm gonna leave that little black section in there because gosh knows why I just wanna I just wanna you know the thinking behind it is that's raised okay um let's go I've gone with too small a brush too small for sure especially for the purposes of this video should be going much faster So I'm choosing here to kind of block in the areas of blue now. So this is, I said it would kind of become a mid-tone. Let me just show you right now. No, I won't because it's a pain in the brush. Oh boy, you're going to be excited. You're going to be excited. Like, what, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? What, what, what great example are we going to see? This, is this going to blow our minds? Is this going to change our view and perspective of the world? It's probably. Right? Oh. It's going, you can see the, the Italians in the background. Tell me what they're saying. Can you understand it? Hey, am I gonna to try to talk over it? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Cause I'm just, I'm tired of cutting videos to hide the, the terror in my house. The terror. So here's an example of practicing colors, right? So I wanted something that looked like this. I wanted like a steel. And so I practiced and I got something that was not really what I was expecting. Okay. So I got a, what basically a black with blue highlights, right? I like it. I think it looks okay, but I was in my head, I was thinking I was getting something like this, but I just kind of persisted and went with it. Okay. And so now I've learned from that. I've done some practice. Okay. Um, and if you want to kind of see what these guys used to look like when I started painting them like that, right? So I've gotten better and it's not so much that the, the painting has got that much cleaner. I mean, I'm able to paint cleaner faster for sure, but the, the reason it looks better is because we're adding light and shadow. That's, that's what the real difference is. That's what makes your models look better is their composition, their uh their ability to to dance in the light and the the moonlight and the i don't i can't remember the thing have you danced with the devil in the pale moonlight of the you know, johnny depp movie or oh, batman so apparently old mate is being is going to be batman again michael keaton it's pretty interesting isn't it that's what you guys came for right for me to talk about batman right what? So these layers probably a little bit too translucent. Does that really really matter? Um, possibly. Is this already on quiet? Well, it's on extra quiet now. So uh, I'm putting a second coat in those extra translucent layers as my brush is starting to fall apart again. It was doing pretty well for a bit, and then now it's now it has gone downhill again and again. But we'll see. So now we go higher. We go higher again and again and again and again and again until, in this case, where with the um, the red, we didn't go all the way up to white. We are going to do that with this, all right? What color is that? Let's have a look see over here. This is a bit dangerous. Over there. What color is that? See, it's pretty dark.
All right. So I got the consistency better, which means I can move it better, which is so much better. This is training, right? When, you, when you're painting with distracting noises in the background, fantastic. This is what it means to be living in the real world. Don't have $2,000 cameras. Don't have hundred million dollars worth of lighting arts you know paying people to produce cut videos for you or be a professional videographer you were just in a dark room with lamps with a cat scratching at the window people screaming in the background and you're painting little toy soldiers and you're like man we are just repressed for real though these goblins it's it's like all the armies that I collect, the company that makes them, hates them. Elder hates them. Like, oh, they're they getting Elder. They don't need any. They don't need any. Uh, um, anything. Instead of just renaming Elder to like just you know put put a little E where an A was or something like that. Who cares? Now they're Eldari. Do they get new models? No, they can have new Banshees. The Banshees look pretty bad though, so it's probably a good idea. And then uh, the Goblins, you play them against any army, you lose. You lose! Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do against them. You have lost. You have lost. Okay. Um, let's have a look-see here. Adding white. This, this, I guess, is the boring part of the video where you really don't need to... to hear me but it's going to be just pure silence right and i'm pretty sure youtube has a way to um you know how like you're watching people's videos and then all of a sudden there's music in the background where the person's not talking i reckon youtube does can do that automatically maybe i don't know i feel like that's something that's definitely possible but um i don't have quiet at my house. I have the relentless war of the goblins and uh, stuff. Alright, that looks terrible, doesn't it? See this highlight here? Do you agree that's a bad highlight? I agree, that's a terrible highlight. And in fact, this paint that I'm using right now, remember with the, the squig, I said too high of a value jump this is again a too high of a value jump. Now this is a hallmark of my painting though, that I have these big um, jumps. There you go. That's the they're the screaming you need to hear. <laughs> That's great. Make this video the most famous thing ever, please. So I can kind of show those people that love love being very loud that it wasn't just all the neighbors who could hear them. It is the entire world that can hear them. You're like, <laughs> anyway, you actually probably can't hear me because I've reduced the sound. Probably can't even hear them. See that highlight there? Bad, silly. That's definitely not in light. Da, 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 da. Well, 
Okay. So the value jump is too high, right? So we need to create a ramp. So we need to create a mix of the colors, two colors that we had. There you go. These are the two colors that are on the model. So I mix them together, make them pretty wet. And then I try to paint in between those layers. All right, and then the idea is we're trying to mix them together so the transition is better. Remember the other thing that we could do that we did with the red? Do you remember this? Because I had that big value jump, and then what did I do? I just painted the red over it, and that reduces that big jump, okay? So that's an option, okay? Same option that we do with the red, doing the blue. So I've had that big jump, boop, that's a boo boo, that's a mistake, possibly. Maybe you don't like it, maybe it's a hallmark of your painting style, which is kind of what I do, like I've uh, mentioned. Um, but you can now just kind of put them together. All right. Brush is struggling. You can do it, Brush. You can do it. I've always done the top of these pretty badly. Um, Yeah, the top of that sucks. That's really bad. Okay, so what do we do? You can paint over it. It's no big issue. Probably should wait for it to dry before you just start doing that, but I'm a madman. I'm a madman, right? Um, what was the point of this video? I've lost my way. I've lost my way. So, this is where we're at, okay? If you want more, right, you keep building up to white. So, you add white, just as an example. And then you put those whiter, lighter bits in the corners, you can do, because this is fabric, although I said I wasn't going to do anything to do with fabric, is you can start adding a little um, textures, little lines, to kind of try to have this represent some sort of fabric, okay? I, uh, like I said, I like the really big value jumps, so I don't mind this. I'm sure there'll be people that really, really, really don't like uh, this look, okay? You want to see what's happening here? Whoa, I know it worked. Okay, so I've added those little dashes just to add some material interest, but it's fully up to you. This video has gone pretty long. Um, and you've experienced the way of the world in the real world, not the studio world, listening to the, the peeps in the world. So, recap. We started in shadow. We built two highlights. Sorry, we built to our midtone and then we added a highlight. Okay? So, when you have these big, big value jumps and you don't want them to be that big of a value jump, what do you do? You re-glaze, as it were, the uh, color that you want, that primary color over the top of it, to soften them down so that transition is not as big. If you do it while it's wet, it will blend it pretty nicely, right? Which is a nice thing to do. So
soul just now. If you want to add a visual interest in these big flat spaces, again, you can put little dashes or little uh, beams of light to represent um, the actual, sorry about that with the microphone, with the, um, the material. I don't think that will stick. I think I actually physically broke this. That's a problem. I'm going to need to glue that down. And I just put my finger all over the blue paint. So now there's a little fingerprint on there. So he is blue. He has some interest. It was a very basic kind of boring um, fabric. Okay, that we did. We didn't do anything special there. And I'm sorry about that. Um, but it might provide a little bit more visual interest to than what you're doing. So, and you're probably thinking, well, that looks kind of bad. But we also have that belt in there. So I just want to kind of get a bit of a light purple. And I'll highlight this belt, right? Oh, I'm doing a bad job. Yeah. Uh, this would be one of those yikes moments. Yikes! Repaint that. But that belt, as you can see, is now kind of broken up that shadow part. Okay. So understand that your model might look uh, not so great, but as you start doing more of the parts and filling in the details and doing all that kind of business, it starts to pull it together and it looks a little bit better. So it might be a part three where we do the skin, maybe a part four where we do the weapon or we do skin and weapon at the same time. I can tell you that I am terrible at weapons and you're probably like, oh, I know you're all okay. Um, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm trash at them. You, I can show you. Right, these, I, I, maybe is my best, but I struggle with them. I do struggle with them a lot, a lot. Sort of snare. We're going to leave it there. I'm going to paint uh, glue gobba onto the model. So that's there and it's stuck. And uh, we will see you next time in a part three on a different day, possibly. I don't even know if this video is going to be useful, to be honest. I'm sorry if it's not. I have to post it because it's part two. I can't strip the model and maybe I can. Dun, 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 dun. See you soon. All right, I'm back with a little add-on. Seven seconds in. Um, another thing I like to do which you may like to do, which adds that extra little visual interest, is these points where, I don't know if you can hear me, these points where it kind of pulls to really kind of something sharp, where you want them to be visually interesting. This is where I add white. Now, I know, you know, previously I was like, you shouldn't build to white. That's what other people say, right? I love that stuff. I love those pointy edges and I know it's a fabric and it shouldn't be super shiny but I just like it you know so adding these little bits of white add these little shine points that make the model visually interesting and again right I'm no expert so this ain't you know, Marcus Frisoni saying, I think it looks more interesting and he's like put a, a masterpiece. So his visual interest is like ridiculously godlike. He's godlike, you know? I just have these little little dots to make it look a little bit more interesting. And this is another little hallmark of my current painting is I like these little uh, areas that have a little points of light so these would be your high heart you know if you're going to do this properly with light these would be your highlights so highlight is the light that's reflecting back to the viewer I just do them in spots that I think will look nice okay again something looks like it's too visually jarring you can glaze over it to pull it back down
That's it.